Welcome to another Creepy Gamers Hobby Hack. Okay, good day viewers. Uh, we're just going to talk a bit about uh, movement trays. A lot of people have asked me about uh, the different uh, movement trays that I've used at different stages. And I think I've finally come up with a solution that I'm happy about. So let's have a look at the ones I've got here. My first idea was um, to use, I like to drink a lot of beer, and so I started uh, coming up with this idea, what am I going to do with all these beer bottle tops? So these guys are just sitting inside a group of five, they're just glued together on a bit of cardboard, and I've got to finish off flocking and spraying this one, give it a bit of highlight and so on, but... Uh, Unfortunately, that a 25mm base will sit just inside a beer bottle lid, all right, and then just a little bit of dowel or a stick or something, and you've got an easy, easy move movement tray, all right. So that's that's the old uh, beer bottle cap, okay, and they sit pretty securely in there. You can give them a bit of a rattle; they won't uh, fall out. You can grab the stick, move them around quickly. Okay, so that's one type, and then I got into uh, these ones, these MDF base ones. So you can, uh, they pop in and out of there, and they come in different shapes and sizes. I bought the ones that are in a line, and they're okay. All right, um, you can grab them, all right, move them around, but if you, uh, you know, they can tip out, and when you get closer, well, we'll do a demonstration in a minute. When you get closer, and you've got to pile in, you've got to start moving guys off the tray and they are, it becomes a bit of a pain to do it that way so you can get those in 25s and 32s and 40s and so on so they are handy um, but you know they do fall out a bit all right so they're not exactly stable all right unless you're going to magnetize them and or blue tack them in blue tacking them in was a big mistake because i started breaking models so the blue tack would stick too well all right, so then the uh, the latest thing I've come up with, people ask me about, is my grots. All right, so moving you know, a unit of 60 grots around can be a bit of a pain. So I've got this um, magnetic material, like it's um, iron steel, rub, rubber steel or something, rubber iron. So this stuff, so these just pop off there. All right, and you can slide them around, you can space them out. So they've got uh, taking up a bigger, larger footprint. All right, so you can space them out like that, and they don't come off. All right, so if you use a good, decent magnet, you can bunch them back up again. You can pile in just by sliding forward. So if this guy's got to slide forward, you can slide in behind him, and there's no problem, you know, piling in with that type of arrangement. So I'll show you how to made these. You need a decent, strong magnet. I've got uh, 10 mil by 2 mil uh, circles on there. Probably 8 mil by 2 mil might have been enough for these guys. So I've got 10 by 2s, and you can make them in any configuration that you like. All right, so there's a unit of 10, and they can slide around, pile in, and so on. And they're, they're the 25 mil, and then the Boing Grot bounders I've got here, they're on 32s, and I put them in groups of five. So they're easy to move around. You can just grab the unit and yeah move them in we're going to attack these guys okay and then if you need to pile in you can just they just slide all right slide off and you can pile them in easy all right so that's uh they've got 10 by 32s i've got some uh, 8 by 2 2 mils as well for smaller bases but there you've got um the units are a lot easier to move around all right, and you can configure them in any any way you want. You can cut them up, cut the uh, this stuff. You can just cut it with scissors. Okay, it's pretty easy to cut. You can cut any shape that you like. I've got some that I've based in sixes and fours, which I'm thinking after playing with it a bit. I'm just popping with some of these out. I think these sixes and fours are better for casualty removal. So I've got a unit of six and and four. All right, so they. They go together, got one guy facing the wrong way there. So six and four, you know, three die, you'll end up with one on a base. You can just pull that one away. Then you've got the six, they can pile in and so on. So 
you can get this um, this flexible iron, this rubber iron. All right, I bought a big roll of it, and I can cut it into any sort of shape I want. And I've laid out trays, etc., with it, and it's easy to pack up. All right, and they don't fall apart. Look, that's you know they're not going to fall and drop the whole base. It's not going to make any difference. They don't tip out, and when you're getting closer. All right, you can pile in, right? So this guy can just pile in, slide around. You don't have, you don't have any lips on the bases, all right? And that's the problem with these things. Okay, they fall out. And then when you get closer, you know, you have trouble piling because they're sitting on top of the lips and things like that. So MDF, I'm not a fan of anymore. The old bottle caps, I'm still making some of these because they're cheap and easy, okay? For some older armies feel 40 skeletons on these types of things but gradually as i uh, get more magnets and so on i'm going to just going to go to this method it's a lot easier save a lot of time in your games and everything as well okay so i'll just show you that the process of putting it on there and uh we'll see how we go okay so this is how we do it i've got a unit here of um sneaky snufflers so i've just finished uh these guys finished painting them their code and everything and so there's fortunately some room on the base there to um, add a magnet all right so i'm going to make a magnet for them uh, some magnets on their bases for their movement tray and i'm using these um 10 by 2 mil magnets they're pretty strong oh yep okay so you can see there they got some good grip and this is this is just an off cut of the um flexible iron the rubber iron stuff Look at any magnetic hobby shop or something, or Aussie Magnets if you're in Australia. Um, there's a good free plug for them. So it can slide around on there pretty good, but the adhesion that way, it's pretty strong. All right, so it's going to grab the part, but you can slide it around and so on. All right, so I've got uh, the uh, the hot glue gun ready. It's warming up. I've got a 40 watt hot, hot glue gun. Um, just a cheap one from the two dollar shop don't need anything special and so what i usually do is i lay out the magnet so there's six of these sneaky snufflers and i want to make sure i get them all going the same direction so um, there's um, a boing grot bounder that i've already done and so i just want to get those magnets all going the same direction so i don't have the uh them fighting each other and sticking together so i'm going to put them all on there in the same direction north south whatever pole it is but just so all my models in my uh, goblin army are all the same polarity and so they won't try and stick to each other that's one of the problems if you get them too close to each other they will uh, stick to each other and cause all sorts of dramas so what I usually do then is just get a tiny little drop. I know I'm using hot glue, but I'll use put a hot tiny drop of um, super glue on each main just to make sure. I haven't tested it without, but I just put that on there, just a tiny little drop of super glue on each magnet to make sure that it's going to stick. Okay, and then uh, you might not be able to see it properly, but I'll see if I can get my hands out of the way. So I'm just going to put a bit of hot glue on here. So. And try not to burn yourself this stuff gets hot so some hot glue on there and then i just go whack put it onto the magnet give it a bit of a swill around there and then hopefully it's not gonna it's gonna stick so i'll just do these guys one it's pretty quick if you've got like a hundred models to do you know a bit of uh get stuck into it hours work or something you might have the lot done magnetize cut up your trays won't take long at all whatever shape you want and you'll be magnetized and have movement trays and it will save so much time in your games and protects your models too you're not uh, grabbing each model you're moving them around by the tray but the best thing about these types of trays is they're practical so when you get in close and you've got to start piling in and you got someone who's a bit pedantic and says, oi, that model's not within one inch. You can actually slide it in. Whereas those other movement trays with the MDF bases, the lips on them and so on, 
it's a bit difficult to get them all within exactly one inch sometimes. So a bit of fudge factor or a bit of understanding from your opponent. Okay, so they're, they're done. I'll just give it a second for the hot glue to cool down. Sometimes this can get a bit stuck. But if you just uh, slide it off now, so now this guy, he's got his magnet stuck on the bottom. And I'm reasonably confident that the magnet will stay. All right, I haven't had, I've done, oh, I don't know, probably about 200 models like this now. At least 160 goblins. You can just pull off that extra bit. And then you can stick them on here. All right, so they're on there. I'm not sure if I want these guys on a, like a tight little movement tray because they want to spread them out. But I'll just keep putting them on a nice little movement tray to um, transport them or whatever. Okay, so then I've got them and they're done. And that's it. All right, and then I can just get some scissors and cut this out to the shape that I want. Okay, and that's it. Magnetic movement trays on the cheap. Okay, you can buy a whole roll of the um, the magnetic flexible iron. I've got uh, some from a long time ago, and I've just bought some more. So you can get uh, this stuff comes in a in a big roll. Okay, so you can get get it by it by the by the meter. All right, and that's it. Movement trays, sneaky snufflers are ready to do some snuffling. Catch you later. And that's it. So that's hobby hack number one done. So any questions, let us know. Uh, please like and subscribe. Any comments, anything you want to see. We'll be doing some army overviews and um, hobby hacks as I think of them. So, okay, no worries. Catch you later. Bye for now. Well, that was different. Yep, lousy, but different. <laughs>